going on everyone? I'm Tony with rchelp.com and in today's video we're going to continue on with the Goblin 380 build. Now in the very first video we did the unboxing. I just showed you real quick what come in the box. The second video was building the frame. We put the skid on, we put the two side frames onto the bottom plate, we put our tail servo mount in here and we built this top plate which included tail drive gear, the main drive gear, the main shaft, main shaft holder, and the anti-rotation bracket. In the last video, we went ahead and went completely through the head, cleaned everything up, made sure everything was lubed, thread locked everything, got the swash plate put together, and then we got it all put on the helicopter. Now again, I have not cleaned any of these bearings. That is why that thing slows down as quick as it does. If I was to clean them out and put my oil in them, they would spin a lot more free than that, but I wanna see how good their oil is. In today's video, we're going to assemble the tail of the helicopter, which is going to be page 20 and page 21. In the next video, we're going to go ahead, put the tail on, and we're going to adjust the belt tension to where we get just the right tension that they say in the manual. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive up close and start building this tail section. All right, guys, as you can see here, we are on page 20 and page 21, and we're going to be just putting the tail together. We're going to start out with this piece, then we're going to move over to here, then we're going to put the blade grips on. Then we're going to put all the rest of this stuff on. Guys, trust me, it is not that hard. This section right here is already assembled, so it's ready to go on. This one right here is already assembled in here. This one's already assembled in here. And then this bearing right here is already assembled into this bracket here. So we don't have to worry about any of that. What we do have to worry about is the rest of it. So to start out with, we're going to need bag 10. And right there is bag 10. And just like before, it is a bag full of bags. <laughs> now this bag right here, they've actually got the tail shaft with this little slider and it is actually stapled together. Right here are little linkages and then again we have a bag with bags. Nothing in that bag except bags. Here we got our blade grips and then right here we got our thrust bearings and everything else to put the blade grips onto the tail shaft. Because I am me, I'm just going to take everything out of the packages but if you're worried about losing anything, guys, uh, just leave it in the package and take it out as you need it. Now, one cool thing is that they have the thrust bearings separated out into two different bags. Those I'm going to leave in the bag. Now, this assembly right up here is going to be that assembly right there. Again, it's already put together. It's already thread locked and you don't have to worry about it. So now we can move on to this one, which is going to consist of the tail shaft, the tail spindle and the two O-rings. And that's as simple as sliding the O-ring on sliding it through, and then popping the other O-ring on. Now they say to put grease on this, I'm gonna put a little bit of bushing oil, which is a little bit thicker than the oil I use in bearings. And it likes to stay on pretty well as well. And there you go, that's all there is to that step. So now we need to assemble the blade grips. And to do that, we're gonna need the blade grip. These two bearings are already in it. We're gonna need a little balls. And then of course, all these little shims and everything to put everything together as well as our thrust bearing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set all this aside and get this manual out of the way. That way we can do this front and center. Now, just like I did with the head, I'm gonna use one of these Allen drivers to help me line everything up. And just like with the head, whenever you put this on, as you can see, that one's got that much play. This one only has that much play, which means this one is gonna go on the outside. And again, on the thrust bearing, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this thick oil right there. So we've got our small diameter. That's gonna go on the outside. Make sure the cup to your thrust bearing is gonna face the inside. And then put your large diameter thrust washer on there. And then finally, grab one of your spacers, toss it on there, and that's ready to go into the blade grip. Now we need to grab one of our little screws and one of our little washers, put those together. We're gonna to clean this bolt off, then we're gonna put a little bit of thread lock on it. All right, got a little bit of thread lock put on it. We're just gonna go ahead Stick that bolt in there, then grab our tail shaft with our spindle and go ahead and screw it on. Now it's just finger tight. Now, repeat the exact same process 
for the other blade grip. All right, once you have that one ready, one, don't forget to put your little shims right on there just like that. Don't forget like I did, let me put it that way. Slide that on, slide our other shim on, and now we can take, slide that grip on, go ahead and tighten it up with two Allen drivers. Go ahead and torque it down. Now, check everything out. Now it says right in the manual that this thing is going to be tight. Give it two to five flights and it should loosen up. Right now it feels like this one is a little bit tighter than this one. As you can see, it's actually moving that other blade grip. And this one isn't. But according to the manual, it says it is normal for the tail to feel a bit tight after initial assembly as the tail spindle preload is usually high when the helicopter is brand new. The preload will loosen up after two to five flights, allowing the system to become smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give it two to five flights, and if it doesn't work out, well, then I may have to work a little bit of that wet sandpaper magic on some of those shims. Now again, the SAB logo is gonna be facing up, so now we know which way that's gonna be. Now we can go ahead and install the balls onto the blade grips. Way too much thread lock. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the actual Allen driver is larger for the tail than it was for the head. There we go. Got the balls on there. So now we need to put together this little guy. And that's going to require these parts right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little sleeves, put them through here. Now whenever you're looking at this, the S that is right here on this linkage should go to the left side on the top. So let's go ahead and slide that in there. Let that sit there. We're going to grab one of our screws. Go ahead and clean it off. A little bit of thread lock just on the very end of it. Then seat that thread lock down there into the threads so it doesn't get into that bushing. And then go ahead, screw it in. And then give it a little bit of snugness, but not enough to cause this thing to start binding. As you can see, we still got some, a little bit of play on there. It's just barely dropping under its own weight. So I'm going to leave it right there and then we do the exact same thing for the other side go ahead and tighten it up until you just feel it start to bottom out and there you go just barely drops under its own weight whenever you're tightening it just tighten it until you start to feel it get snug that's these aluminum arms right here gripping onto that center sleeve so now that we have this we can go ahead and take the assembly slide it up onto the shaft All right, and I just found the first pretty serious issue with this kit. This piece right here, the slider on the tail shaft, it would not slide whatsoever. I had to put a little bit of oil on there and to sit here and work it back and forth up here. And then once it started to get a little bit free, I went ahead, cleaned off the shaft, cleaned off the inside of this. And then down here where that little knurl is, I just went back and forth across it. And that just, it allowed it to open up this brass sleeve and that allows it to slide nice and free. Now I know they said it would be tight, but a servo could not move this as tight as it was. But now it moves nice and free, so we can go ahead, line up that ball link, and line up this ball link, and try to push them together. It's gonna need some persuasion. There's one. And there's two. It does still feel a little bit tight, but it's not as tight as it was on this piece here. It, I mean, it's, it's smooth. It is buttery smooth. This is absolutely fantastic. What I was gonna do was I was gonna take a piece of emery inside this brass, but with it being brass, it's soft, and I didn't really wanna do that. Thankfully, it's got this neural with some pretty sharp edges, and it allowed me to sit here and just go back and forth and just kind of work out those little kinks that were in it. All right, so now that that's done, we need bag 11. Because what we're going to be starting on is this right up here. Basically, all we have to do on this one is put this bracket with these two screws together. Then we get to put together the bell crank, and then we get to put it all together. Again, I'm going to get the manual out of the way. That way, you guys have a little bit better view of what's going on. Pull out our bag full of bags. Right there's our bell crank. There's that piece we're fixing to put together. There's the tail gear, and then obviously the tail belt that we're going to set aside. And then right here, we are gonna need this. This is just your vertical tail fin. I am not gonna put any decals on it right now, but I will, I will soon. 
All right, first things first, take that piece right there, and we're going to grab this piece. Now remember, the SAB on this will go up whenever you're reading this. And of course, we're going to clean off the bolts, apply just a hair of thread lock, and then we're going to put the bolts in through the back. Before I get that one all the way tightened, go ahead and put a little bit of thread lock right there. And don't go crazy, this is going into aluminum. And there we go. So now, we need to assemble the bell crank, and to do that, we're going to take a bearing, put it up in the bottom just like that. We're going to take our sleeve, drop it down the middle just like that, take our other bearing, stick it up here on top. Then we're going to take those two screws, and we're going to put one in here and one in here. And I do like that anything that's really going into plastic has larger threads than a regular machine thread. And whenever you're putting these in, you just want to snug them up. You don't want to go crazy and strip these things out because if you lose these two screws, you lose all tail authority. Right there it stopped. Yep. There we go. And of course, you got your little ball end, which is going to go right here. They say on this piece to go ahead and put CA on it. Again, I have no CA. And there we go. So now we're going to take all these pieces and we're going to put them all together. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our tail assembly, slide it through this bearing. And we'll take this piece. We're just going to slide it up in that little groove right there. Now we can take this long screw, feed it up in here. And we're just going to finger tighten this one right now. I have not put thread lock on that. Now, take our tail drive gear, slide it on, take our tail fin, slide the shaft through the bearing. Then we can take those two screws, clean them off, and they're going to go in them two holes right there. A little dab of thread lock. We're just going to line up our holes. Grab our other screw. Go ahead and clean the oil off of it. Even more thread lock. And go ahead, tighten down. I mean, you guys are yelling at me that I forgot the belt. I got this, I got this. So now, we're going to take that little grub screw, which is the last screw left. Go ahead and clean it off. Now we're going to put just a little bit more thread lock on, let it seep down into those threads, wipe off any of the excess, and now what we need to do is look down in that hole and find that recess spot. You can see it goes silver and then it goes dark. Right there is where we need to be. I don't know if you saw it push this out, but that's going to self-align itself. Then, snug her down pretty good, take you a towel, wipe off any excess thread lock, and there you go. So now, we have a nice, smooth working tail assembly. Doesn't spin too bad either. And here's one thing that I've noticed. That thing has the perfect amount of side-to-side -side play right here. I mean, you, you can't get any better than that. That right there is quality machine work. So far up until this point, which has been three separate build videos, the frame, the head, and then now the tail, this slider right here is the only part that I had a problem with. It was way too tight, but I'd rather have something way too tight than way too loose and have a bunch of slop in it. And right now, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead, pull this bolt back out, put a little thread lock on it, and then we're going to drive it on home where it's going to stay for the rest of eternity because I'm never going to crash this helicopter. I just jinxed myself, didn't I? <laughs> Go ahead and slide it through and tighten it up. See what happens if we tighten down on that pretty good. It stays exactly the same. So the spacing on that plastic with that sleeve inside there is absolutely perfect with these outer radial bearings. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright guys, so there you go. We got the entire tail assembly put together and the only issue was this little slider that slides back and forth on that shaft just being a little bit too tight. But like I said, I was able to get it on there, put a little bit of oil on it, 
and just work it back and forth across that little recessed area and it was able to just basically polish the brass that's in there and allow it to slide nice and smooth. Now, these grips are extremely tight. They say to give it two to five flights and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So if you guys wanna help out on this build, guys, click that PayPal link down there in the description and help us out. You know, we need the motor, we need the battery, we need the servos and we need spare parts. So if you guys wanna help us out, click on that PayPal link in the description, help us out and it would be greatly appreciated, it really would. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down because interaction's interaction and it still bumps us up. Another thing that bumps us up because of interaction is posting in the comment section below. So guys, post your comments in the comment section and even questions or suggestions, post them in the comment section below as well. I wanna thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video.